Now, let us understand how to analyze data with the help of a correlated t test. In this, we must understand what are the different names of the correlated t test, what are the different assumptions which must be satisfied by the data. If those assumptions are not satisfied, then one cannot analyze data with the help of a correlated t test. Next, one should understand how to word the objective, because the wording of the objectives will also help you to decide the statistical technique to be used for analyzing the data. Next, you must know how to formulate the hypothesis for which the data can be analyzed with the help of a correlated t test. Now, once we come to this stage, then we must know how the data analysis to be done and this has to be done with the help of the statistical package for social sciences. Next, we must know that how to interpret the data. The another name for the correlated t test is paired samples t test. This name you will find in SPSS. The data should satisfy some of the assumptions. One of the assumptions is the normal distribution. That means, the data should have a normal distribution. The next is that the you should have the groups. That means, they should be classified into two groups. Other assumptions for the data to be satisfied are that data must be either on the interval scale or on the ratio scale. The next assumption and the last assumption is that there should be no outliers. That means, there should be no extreme values. If there are extreme values, then correlated t test will not be very appropriate to use for the analysis. In order to analyze the data with the help of correlated t test, a researcher should have one group and for this group, the researcher must have the data at two points of time. Say for example, if you are interested in studying the effectiveness of the yoga and if you have only one group and if you want to compare the only weight of the group before and after, then you have the weight of different subjects before the yoga is started. From these weights, one can compute mean. Then the group is asked to continue with the yoga program, maybe for 10 days, 15 days or one month, whatever it is. If it is one month, then at the end of the one month, the weight of the same people is taken again. One is called a pre-weight, another is called a post-weight. And from these weights, one can calculate mean and one can analyze this particular data with the help of a correlated t-test. Now, the data must satisfy the assumptions of the correlated t-test. If these assumptions are not satisfied, then data cannot be analyzed with the help of a correlated t-test. For the correlated t-test, the objective can be worded like to compare mean scores of achievement in physics at pre and post stages of the group taught through computer aided instruction. For this objective, the hypothesis can be worded as given below.
there is no significant difference in mean scores of achievement in physics at pre and post stages of the group taught through computer aided instruction. Now, this hypothesis has been formulated in the null form. If as a researcher you have a strong base, then you can formulate a directional hypothesis also, but without having a strong base it is advisable not to formulate a directional hypothesis. Once you collect the data where you have used a design whose name is pretest, post test, single group design, then the data can be analyzed using the SPSS and in that SPSS you will be using a correlated t test. In SPSS you will not come across the name as correlated t test, but it is given as paired samples t test. So, you will be using paired samples t test option given in the SPSS. I will demonstrate the SPSS later on. So, if you analyze the data with the help of the paired samples t test using SPSS, from the output of the SPSS you can take information which is relevant in order to interpret the result and the one table is prepared from the output of the paired samples t test. From table one can see that the correlated t value is 31.10 which is significant at 0 0.01 level with d f equal to 29 it indicates that the mean score of achievement in physics of group taught through computer aided instruction differ significantly. In this context the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference in mean scores of achievement in physics at pre and post stages of the group taught through computer aided instruction is rejected. Further, the mean score of achievement in physics at pre test is 46.63 and at post test is 63.63. Now, the mean score in achievement in physics at post test is significantly higher than that at the pre test. Therefore, it may be said that the computer aided instruction was found to be effective. 